Anthony Filippazzo, a six-year-old boy living with Williams syndrome, a rare disease also known as the opposite of autism. It's a complex genetic disorder caused by a deletion in chromosome 7. It affects 1 in 7,500 to 10,000 people worldwide. However, all of them have exactly the same deletion from a specific region. One set of about 26 genes on chromosome 7. This missing piece of genetic materials manifests in a variety of characteristics and causes a series of medical, developmental, and behavioral problems. When he was first born, they thought he was, um, he had too much blood and needed a blood diffusion. Then he had hypoglycemia. He failed all his newborn hearing screening tests, all within the first 24 hours of life. And they told me he was hearing impaired. He had a hole in his heart. He was very sluggish and lethargic. And at eight weeks old, I found him not breathing. It turned out he had pneumonia and respiratory synthetic virus. And this was just the beginning. Six months later, Anthony was diagnosed with severe gastric disease. He had trouble sleeping and cried every single night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. He suffered delays in motor skills and couldn't sit up. By two years old, Camille had already taken him to many doctors, including a neurologist, cardiologist, and gastroenterologist. She knew something was wrong with her son, but no one could really put their fingers on what the problem was until Camille took Anthony to a geneticist. He walked in the room, took one look at my son, and said, I could be wrong, but I think your son has Williams Syndrome. So we see these kids, and they, have, they look different than, than other kids. They have a characteristic facial appearance. They're described as having um, elfin-like faces. Usually they have prominent eyes, kind of puffiness around their eyes and puffiness around their lips. They have mild ear differences. Their ears kind of stand out a little. They have a flat nasal bridge. And from one to the other, they look very similar um, as a result of these, these facial features in common. But what really confirms the diagnosis of Williams syndrome is DNA analysis. One of the tests is called FISH, which stands for fluorescent in situ hybridization. It looks specifically for chromosome 7 and its region. Another test, called microarray comparative genomic hybridization, is a high-resolution test that looks at all the genetic materials. Both tests can tell whether there is missing genetic information on chromosome 7 causing Williams syndrome. So what was your reaction to the diagnosis? Not easy to get that kind of news. You go to the doctor thinking they're gonna give us an answer and a way to make our children better. And this was news of a very permanent and very devastating condition that I knew nothing about. At that time, I was then learning that my son had much more of a detailed heart condition than I had first believed it to be. He has both pulmonary and aortic stenosis. From a mild, moderate, severe stage, he's pretty much in the middle, and he was pretty much born that way. It just wasn't caught. Anthony's severe heart condition is not uncommon. About 80% of children with Williams syndrome have congenital heart disease, such as supravalvular aortic stenosis. It narrows the main vessel carrying blood from the heart to the rest of the body, which can cause a problem with their kidneys or lead to high blood pressure, which eventually could involve coronary arteritis. In addition to heart problems, most children with Williams syndrome also face gastrointestinal problems, high blood calcium levels, low muscle tone, low thyroid level, and vision problems. They often experience developmental delays, learning difficulties, and cognitive challenges. Early in life, once the diagnosis is made, we do an evaluation of their heart, of their kidneys, of their blood to see if their calcium is elevated, to see if their thyroid hormone is normal, and to check their urine. We plot the growth chart that's special for kids with Williams syndrome to make sure that they're growing properly. For each of the medical problems, we just address the problems as they come up. He does extensive occupational therapy, physical therapy, ABA, speech, feeding therapy, reading therapy, aqua therapy. Um, in conjunction between school and therapy, my son works 55 hours a week on average. Despite how difficult and challenging their lives are, people with Williams syndrome are very happy and outgoing in general. Scientists aren't sure why this happens. They speculate it's another effect of the missing genetic materials.
There's no stranger danger with our children. They will come up and, and hug you and befriend you instantly, even if you are a stranger, which is bittersweet and um, can be socially awkward at times, but there really is not that filter. That's what uplifts us all, because even on days that are tougher than others, you know, I have a child who is consistently happy and always beaming and wakes up with a smile and energy and there's no grumpy days. Although not everyone with Williams syndrome has the same capacity for indiscriminate kindness, they are usually warm and friendly. But they don't always receive friendliness in return because they frequently miss the social cues from others. Benjamin Moncaba, a 31-year-old living with Williams Syndrome, shared his story with us. I didn't like middle school that much, and it was a very tough time because the students there weren't treating me with respect, and, uh, and uh, the band teacher wasn't that nice either. He had a, a birthday party when he was in middle school, and we invited the entire eighth grade, and only one child came. And, you know, fortunately, we have many, many friends in the neighborhood who came. There are those who understand, and there are those who don't. Um, eighth graders don't, for the most part. And so that was a tough time for Ben. Looking back at Ben's growth, his mom, Terry Mancaba, told us she never stops worrying about him. Would he be able to master the skills necessary to live alone as an adult? Would he be able to protect himself from exploitation? 10 or 20 years ago, there was so much less offered to individuals, you know, as they became adults, that we had no idea what Ben's future would be. And so to watch, you know, as, as, as he was little, you know, music enrich his life. And, um, and then there were a, a couple of, of charities who met Benjamin, and he became a young international ambassador for Variety, the children's charity. Uh -huh. and, doors began to, to open up and we began to realize how much Benjamin can give back you know, to his community. Like Ben, many individuals and families with Williams Syndrome devote themselves to their community. The Williams Syndrome Association, formed in 1982 by six Williams Syndrome families, dedicates itself to providing the medical and educational resources and support to individuals and families. This year, families with Williams Syndrome in the New York City area raised over $1 million for a three-year study conducted by Columbia Children's Hospital. It's so much easier to um, walk this journey when you know that others have walked it before you and can pave that road for you. It makes you feel so much better to learn you're not alone. I'm now very active and very passionate about continuing to raise funds and awareness for cardiovascular research. My son is only five, and I feel that if we stay on this path and we continue to build and expand and um, raise awareness and capital, you know, we could really have uh, an opportunity to see some significant change in this arena. Many researchers believe that in the future, a new technique for replacing missing DNA segments will exist, allowing geneticists to one day unlock the mysteries surrounding Williams Syndrome. For Science and You, I'm Tina Beth Pina.